So Curly from City Slickers, is there one thing In the movie City Slickers, the character Curly, played by Jack Pylance, tells the other characters, other members of the cast, that in life there is just one thing. Well, is there really just one thing that you need to know in spotting deception or an interview and interrogation? Hi, Stan Walters, back with you again on the Lie Guy channel. I want to share some thoughts with you about uh, the last posting that I had, uh, about some of the bizarre training that was going on by a guy, and also this concept uh, got some great feedback from some of the folks, and I, I shared that video with some folks on uh, LinkedIn professional groups, uh, Global Police Trainers, Detecting Deception, several of the groups that I participate in, and they found some of the, some of the stuff absolutely amazing and stunning, and, and the, the person teaching this stuff is, is <laughs> got to be a fool. It's, it's something amazing. If you, if you go back and look at that again, I went through some of the stuff this guy claims are deception cues. But when you think about it, though, and, and great comments that I'd gotten from some of the folks on that feedback, and some of the instructors there had similar situations happen, though, about this one thing idea. Uh, mentioning that even some of their students said, is, well, you know, this is all well and good, but tell me the one thing. Is there one symptom, one thing I need to know for spotting people being deceptive? Uh, and, and I've seen this a lot in the media. You've seen some of it. They want the one cue and so forth. And I've done a lot of media work. You've seen some of my media videos down there with, with Fox and ABC and NBC and CNN and so forth. And I'm often asked, you know, is there one thing? What's the one thing we should remember? Well, there's not one thing in spotting deception. And, and I'm tickled with some of the folks who take an online class in deception cues. And suddenly they declare themselves experts because they took an online class uh, that, that's fine, uh, good for you, but... It still takes some practice, but there's a lot more that goes into interview and interrogation and spotting deception. First of all, there's not a single cue. We all know that. There's no universal symptom and so forth. There are some stress cues, but stress is not a sign of deception. But occasionally, those stress cues do show up when somebody's being deceptive. So you can't rule those out. It's just that some of the cognitive and emotional changes a person's going through. But to me, there's a, there's a lot more to the discipline of your interrogation than just one thing. And I have students ask, you know, is there a class I can take in college? <laughs> Not really. Uh, there's a multiple levels of discipline here. First, you've got to be able to spot deception. And you've got to do that accurately. This is where I'm complaining about some of the courses being taught just on deception alone. Because there's so many myths that are perpetuated about eye contact and arm crossing and leg crossing that keeps this thing alive with this these myths and why people are, are very poor performers in spotting deception. And the folks that these people are training, too, wind up doing a very poor job. But that's just one part. You, see, you, deception cues are very fleeting. They're very muted. Uh, they don't start, literally jump out at you. You've got to keep working them. So a good narrative-based interview where you re review through the information, review the interview two or three times with a person using different modalities, different approaches to withdraw information, and you make several passes over the information to help you make an accurate assessment. But you also have to be aware as the interviewer, there's problems of also of personality disorders, there's psychological disorders that come into play. You've got to be aware of the changes of a person cognitively and emotionally. Uh, check a couple of videos back where I did one about dealing with an angry subject. Uh, you have to be able with depression. You've got people who are trying to manipulate, trying, people are trying to bargain with you. Uh, you might see some emotional depression behavior going on. Uh, then there's abnormalities that happen with psychosis and emotional disorders and personality disorders that, that have a, create a, a challenge for you. And you need some training and understanding of that. Uh, my background is in uh, criminology and sociology, looking at social deviant behavior. And you've got to see where all those things, alcohol abuse and drug use comes into play and social pressures and people are different, different personality types. Um, so and, and this idea that there is a formula you know, follow this magic formula and you'll get a confession. Well, there's no Martha Stewart menu for that either. Uh, people are different. You have to conduct different interviews for different people. And they may have done the crime, the act together. So you can't say interview all pedophiles this way, all uh, larceny cases this way, all burglars like that, all rapists like that. You can't do that. Each person has to stand individually. So currently when he's talking about there's one thing, there's not an interview and interrogation of spotting deception. There's not a universal cue. There's not single discipline. 
The best interviewers are the ones who understand human behavior, great communicators, great at uh, uh, phrasing the questions. And you might have to phrase a question four or five different ways, four, different, four or five different forms in order to get the right reaction, to get the response. Then you have to use ethical persuasion tactics. Second flaw in false confession cases is unethical uh, persuasion tactics that typically coerce subjects. We talked earlier in another posting about how interviews sometimes talk too much, and that's typical of an accusatory style interview. So there's, there's not one thing. Go back and look at some of the other uh, YouTube postings that I've done and catch up with me in class and check some of the work at theliguy.com. Check in uh, and subscribe to the Lie Guy blog. I'm doing some more postings of, of information for you, trying to put more resources in your hands so you can do a better job. See, I enjoy speaking and working with agencies and organizations who need to train their people how to conduct effective interviews, how to spot a lie, uncover the real story, and then make better decisions with that information. Right down to the bottom right down here, you should see a spot, subscribe, pass this along to other folks, because I like to build this list. I want to get this information out to give you good things. Facebook, uh, if you're on Google Plus, I'd love to uh, join with you there. But I'd like to get this information out to you. So see you again on the next episode of the Lie Guy channel. Be safe.